I've started recording now. So after asking about the, the this is the presenting complaint. This yeah. is the bell. You you greet the patient. They are also the bell data also. The bell data yeah. you ask about the name, the age, the occupation, the address, the religion, the tribe, the marital status level of education, and here is the reproductive profile. You want to know the parity, the last menstrual uh, period, the expected date of delivery, the um, gestational age. Yes. You understand? This is what you want to ask. So should in yeah. case. If the woman just saw the last menstrual period, you don't need all this expected date of delivery. The woman is not pregnant. Do you understand? Okay. So you go straight yeah. to the point where, why the woman came. Do you understand? So you now say, you ask like it was presented at the patient, but the woman had cough and fever. You want to know which one came first out of these symptoms. Is it the fever that came first? Is it the um, cough? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. came first. So you now start the analysis. It's better to start from what came first. First, it's always analytical, because you are asking questions like, "Why do we ask which one came first?" It's always better to know the main thing that started first, because okay. some other disease, the presenting complaint, the main chief complaint is very important. So you can differentiate. Okay, these are other things that can be associated to it. It's just for example, somebody who is coughing. A lot of things can cause somebody to cough. There are a lot of causes of cough. There's physiological causes, there's pathological causes of cough. You just eating something, irritating your reflexogenic zone can cause you to cough. Okay. You understand? Yeah. So you want to know, okay, if you, and you start coughing. So after cough, what is the next thing? Oh, I start feeling hot at night. So your mind is already pointing towards a definitive yeah. diagnosis. Is it TB? Is it pneumonia? You understand? So, yes. so let's start with cough. The patient tells you that he's having cough. So we start with the history of the presenting complaint. So we want to analyze the history of the presenting complaint, which is the cough. So we are analyzing cough. We want to analyze, analyze cough, right? Can you, can, you back, can you push the blackboard up? Um, can you take it up? Uh, like I can't see what you're writing again. Ah, you can't see. You can't see what I'm writing like this. Uh, it's okay, dear. Uh, it's okay. All right. Uh, or about like this. Okay. Uh, better, bye. Oh, better, better, better. And you can see it very well now. I can see it now, yeah. Analyze cough. Okay. So we analyze cough. So how do we analyze cough? So there's an acronym, which I told them earlier, if you watched the previous video, when I was explaining analysis generally. There's an acronym you used to analyze cough, and the acronym is doctor. Okay? That's an acronym for analyzing cough. So first, what is doctor? The D is the duration. The O is the onset. Okay? okay, so but it's always preferable to ask onset first. I, mean, I feel like onset is better. Do you understand that? Right? Asking the duration first. You want to know when does it start before how long has it been? Does that make sense? Yes. So me, I always prefer these are the acronyms everybody uses, but it's always better, even in an hospital setting, to start with the onset, followed by how long. So you want to ask about the onset first. Oh, sorry. Onset. So after asking about onset, how do you ask about onset? You want to know when, when did it start? Yeah, when was did it start? Was it something that started suddenly or is it, is it something that started gradually? Or you inspirate or you aspirate on any object? You want to know. Okay. Do you understand? So yeah. when did it start? That's the first question, right? Was yeah. it Was it gradually? Or, or let's say, was it suddenly? Sorry, I'm getting some message. Was it suddenly, mm -hmm. suddenly, okay. or gradually? Or you inspirate or aspirate any object? Or you inspirate or aspirate any object? Do you understand? You want to know. Yeah. But it's not necessarily you ask all these long questions. Hold on, let me silence my phone. Yeah, so you want to ask about any object. You want to ask, when did this start? Was it a gradual process? But once you ask, when did this start? It's even enough there. You understand? Then for the doctor, for the D part, you want to know the duration. So how do you, how do you ask duration, doctor? Um, how long, has, how long has you, have you been coughing? Yeah, how long? Has it been? You understand? You want to ask how long has it been? 
Okay, after how long has it been? What's the next thing? Hmm? Doctor. Um I told um, you. Can you see? Can you still see what I'm typing? Yeah, I can, can see what you're typing. Eh, all right. Yeah. So the then next thing, the 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 C, the C. Consistency of, of the no of no the, the, the C means character. Don't forget. Character. Okay. Yeah, character. Like is it dry? Want, yeah, the, there's a lot of things you have to characterize here. You want to know first, has it been growing worse or has it been growing bad? Like compared to when it initially started. Okay. You understand? Has it been getting worse? Has it been getting bad? Yeah. Then you now start analyzing other character. Is it dry or is it wet? Okay. Do you understand? You want to know if it is dry or wet. You want to know if, even if, if it is wet, you know it will come with sputum. Yes. Do you understand? You want to know the color of the sputum. You want to know if it is foamy or if it is thick. You understand? You want to know yes. if there's any content, if there's blood in it or if it is blood stain. Do you understand? You want to know if it has a particular smell. You want to know like the volume, how, how, how voluminous it is in a day. Can you feel so, so and so thin? Do you understand what I'm saying, doctor? Yes. So let's, let's analyze the character. The character. You want to ask, has it been getting better or worse? You want to know. So after that, still under the character, you want to know like, is it dry initially, or is it dry or wet? Is it dry? Is it dry or wet? You want to know the character of the cup. You, under, you understand? You know when the cup is dry. And we go, <coughs> like, yeah. we'll see Kelly because, because, like, of course, I know the cup now. Huh? You understand? So, <laughs> is it dry or wet? You want to know that. So after knowing if it is dry or wet, if it is wet now, you even want to ask, is it blood stain? Does it contain any blood? That is the content. You want to ask about the yeah. content. The content of it. Is it bloody? You know, some, some cough can be bloody. Yeah. In TB, some, some can be very like, can contain blood, can be blood stain. So you want to know the color. Color of the sputum. You want to ask about the color of the sputum, if it has a particular color. And you want to ask the, the, the consistency. Is it thick or is it foamy? Is it thick? Is it thick or, or foamy? You want to know. You understand? And also, you want, you want to know if it has a particular smell. Like, how does it smell? You can ask the patient. How? Does it smell? You understand? All this thing is still under character. We are characterizing the character of the cough. Do you understand? So after knowing how does it smell, you even want to know, like this is your cough. If you are to be if it is wet cough, like what's the volume? How will you quantify this sputum that you are producing? Can you fill a cup or a glass of eva eva water? You understand? You can ask how this is the volume now. The volume. You understand? Yeah. How will you quantify quantify this putum? You understand? You want to ask how will you quantify this putum? You understand, doctor? So you can ask, can you fill a cup of uh, ever water or this and the rest? That's enough. That's enough uh, about the characteristics. You understand? So we go to the T. You want to ask about the T? The T is the time, the time, the time, the time. You understand? So you want to ask, like, this cough, when does it get worse? Is it at night or in the day? The time. The time of the cough. You know, some cough mostly or come majorly at night. Some is yes. during the day. Depending on the disease that is affecting the person. You understand? You know, when you sleep, the sputum comes and like to the reflexogenic zone. And when you wake up, it's irritate the reflexogenic zone, initiating cough reflex. 
you understand? So that is why most people, when they wake up, maybe early in the morning, five o'clock, four o'clock, they start coughing. You understand? When they lie down and when they wake up, then they start coughing. You understand? So you want to know about the time of the cough. So when does it get worse? You want to know. Is it night or day? Night or day? You want to know. You understand? So after asking all these things, then you want to talk about other symptoms. That is the O4. This one is other symptoms. Other symptoms. So somebody who is coughing, what other symptoms do you think could be associated with it? Somebody who is coughing. There are a lot of symptoms that will be associated with it. Yes, pain. Chest pain, okay, chest pain is other symptoms, but there's something we call other symptoms and there's related phenomenon. Chest pain will be on that related phenomenon. You know why? Because it's related to the diagnosis you're having in your mind. So other symptoms that can happen when somebody is coughing could be maybe the oh, yeah. or could be wheezing. The person can be having wheezy. Yeah. Somebody who is coughing, <laughs> it will be wheezing. You understand? Like, let's say wheezy, Wizu, okay, and yeah. you can ask about maybe uh, dyspnea. Okay. Dyspnea, understand? You want to ask about this? This test in dyspnea. No, right. yeah. Yeah, no, oh. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, oh, okay, oh, yeah, okay. Hold on a second, please, doctor. I'm sorry, somebody's no, no problem. Uh, Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, doctor. Sorry. Let's continue. So that is other symptoms, please. Okay. So the other symptoms, is it blood stain? Is it tick? Is it mucoid? Like there's other symptoms that could be associated with somebody who is coughing. So the arrow part of the um, doctor is related Phenomenon. You understand? Later. Phenomena. Okay. So what are the related phenomena? As you said before, you said yes. chest pain. So you want to ask about chest pain. You understand? And apart from chest pain, also, there's something that is also related to um related phenomena. You want to ask about drenching night sweat. It's very important. Yes. It's very, very important. People who are having fever. You know, fever is also an associated this. You want to ask about the related phenomenon. You know, somebody who is coughing is probably TB. It's probably pneumonia. Yes. It's probably HIV. You understand? So you want to ask about drenching night sweat. It's a very common thing. Drenching night sweat. You want to ask about it. Okay, you want to ask about if the person has been having headache. Also, those are the related phenomena. Okay, you want to ask about vomiting. You understand? You want to ask about syncope and all the rest. So those are the common thing. Maybe somebody who is coughing, there might be redness of the eyes. You see the eyes changes. You understand? But these are the major one you should take note and you shouldn't forget. Doctor, do you understand what I'm saying, please? I understand, of course. So in summary, this is pulmonary TB. And sorry and cough clerking of clack cough okay and very important if you want to analyze the next one fever when you once you are moving to fever you have to ask fever in relationship to the previous one how do what do i mean by this for example the person is having fever right so i will ask you like please i would like to ask you when did you notice you are feeling feverish is it immediately after the cough or before the cough or two weeks after the cough or two days after the cough. I want to know. Okay. You understand? It's very important yeah. you ask it before you now continue to clack your fever. And how do you clack fever? You also clack fever using this doctor. Am I making sense, doctor? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to fever. Fever. Yeah. We are, we are, and, Analyze fever. Do you understand? Do you have any yes. question at this point, please? Do you understand? No. no. Okay, I'm let's... beginning to ask much questions too. 
you begin to do it. I said, I'm beginning, I think I'm scared of clacking now. I said, I'm beginning to realize there's too much questions. Yeah, you have to have questions. You have to know questions to ask because it's like you are taking history from the patient and this is what you do in the hospital. And you must be able to actually do that. It's what you do in when you go for a consult or something. You get. So that's what you apparently you do. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So let's let's analyze uh, fever. So the first thing we're also going to use the same thing, onset. You understand? You want to ask about the onset of the fever. When did it start? Then after onset, you also want to ask about the duration. The same thing. You want to ask how long has it been? So the, the funny thing about all these clerking is they have the same pattern. Doctor, only when it's pain that you use another acronym it's called Socrates. You know about Socrates from Russia now, you remember? SOCRT, yes. Yeah, Socrates is the site of the pain, the uh, onset. I did not study in English. Eh? I did not study in English. Ah, 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 ah. No, you have to do my short tour just somewhere. Uh, maybe, but that's, you use Socrates because sight, onset. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've seen it here too before, but I did not. Loud enough, so we'll do that okay. later. We'll do that later. Okay? So mm -hmm. let's just continue with this one. So this is the onset. Okay, and the duration, you want to know the duration. You know how to ask for duration. I don't have to repeat myself typing it on how to yes. ask for duration. So yes. after the duration, you want to ask for what? The character okay. of the fever. So you want to know the fever. Is it a, is it, is it, yeah. is it a low grade fever or is it a high grade fever? You want to know. You know there's difference between both of them. Yes. Apart from being a high grade fever or a low grade fever, you also want to know the character. Like, is it also, is it an intermittent fever? Or is yeah. it a continuous fever? Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. I think the mistake I made was posting some pictures before starting this thing with you. So different people are messaging me. Sorry, What's that picture on Instagram? No, 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 on my uh, WhatsApp. I, like, it's still to there. Okay. Yeah, just my old friends. Okay. Um, so you want to let's start with the character. The character is it? Is it low or high? Just write low, low or high. Yeah, yeah. Is it oh you want to ask, has it been getting worse or getting better prior to this time? You want to ask the same thing you the same thing I has here. Like, has it been has it been getting getting better or, or worse you, under, you understand you want to know is it low grade fever or high grade fever you also want to know okay so apart yeah. from low grade or high grade fever you want to know is is it present all through the day? Is it an intermittent? Is it continuous or is it an intermittent fever? Do you understand? Okay. Is it present? Is it present all through the day? That is when I mean present all through the day. I mean continuous. Okay. Continuous. Continuous fever, continuous fever, or or maybe only during the only sometime maybe in the morning, or only like you understand, or sometimes in, in the day. So this is called intermittent. Intermittent fever. Okay. Do you understand, doctor? Yes. So you want to know about this. Then apart from that also, you want to know about the time. Okay, actually this one here should be under time, the continuous. You understand? It yes. should be under time, not character. It should be under time. You understand? So we have D-O-C-T. So we'll talk about the onset, the duration, yeah. the character. Then the time. time is the time. You understand? 
Then after yeah. the time, then you want to ask about other symptoms. So what other symptoms could be presented with fever? I believe you can see what I'm writing, doctor. Yes, I can. Okay. I can. Let's talk about other symptoms that can... But that could be. Is, it, is it present all through the day? Sometimes in the day, so that's time, okay. Yeah, that's time. That's another time. So now let's talk about the... Uh, what's it called? The other symptoms. Okay. Other symptoms. So what are the other symptoms that can be present? Other symptoms that could be present. Other symptoms. So what are the other symptoms, doctor? Hmm? If you're having fever. Okay. Hmm? Have, you been, have, you, have you ever a okay. headache? Of course, headache is one of it. Headache. Mm -hmm. Chills. Chills, yeah. Fatigue. Chills, chills and rigor. And rigor, yeah. Yeah. What other thing? Okay, fatigue. we go. Fatigue, yeah, the person can become fatigued. Body oh. aches. Oh, yeah, that's rigor. Fatigue. Loss of appetite. Loss of appetite. Okay, what other thing? Yeah, a lot. Weakness, fatigue, muscle pain. Right? So that's yeah. enough, apparently. So, you want to ask also about the related phenomenon. Related phenomena. So what are the related phenomena to uh, this thing, to fever? You want to ask first, very important. You want to ask, does the fever, does it respond to paracetamol? Okay. You want to, it's very important, like, have you taken any antipyretic? So you want to know what you are dealing with. Does it response or is it responsive to PCM paracetamol or maybe tip and tepid sponging remember our tepid sponging that we discussed mm -hmm. in uh, this conversion thing uh, yes. fibrile conversion now this is the second clacking you are doing with me is it yeah the first one was antenatal booking so we've done four right now so I think you did um, you did alcoholism, antinatal booking. Uh, those, ones, those ones are cancelling, no? Those ones are cancelling. Antinatal booking, was it cancelling? Antinatal booking is clicking, but alcoholism, fibroid conversion, they are cancelling. That's what I'm saying. Like, you, you, you've done two cancelling for me, then this is the second clacking. So we've only done yeah. four classes. Yeah. Ah, all right, together, right? Yeah, together, yeah. All right, we still have a lot of things to do. We still have a lot of I'm things. But please, uh, it's not alpha. I I okay, will. doctor, it's not how far, but how well. So I please, will, yeah. I want you to please put this thing. By now, next time I'm meeting you, please, you, you, should, you can call me at random. Anytime you are free in the hospital, call me that. Okay. Uh, and doctor, please, I want, to, I want us to clack. That one okay. is outside. It doesn't involve this thing. You can just clack with me randomly. So okay. right. rather than if you don't feel like sending me or a voice note, call me. You can call me. Yeah, okay. I, I have that. You can call me. I might be outside. Okay, let's discuss. Let's clap. Maybe when you're having break in your, in your workplace. Okay. Call okay. me randomly. Let cancel and let clap. Let cancel. Okay, I'll ask you. Okay, cancel. It's not. It won't take okay. much time. Do you understand what I mean, doctor? Please feel yeah. free to do that. Feel free to do that. So I should be expecting your call henceforth, right? Yes. I mean random calls, though. Like you just call yes. me randomly. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'll be waiting on that. So okay. let's continue. So this is enough for, um, for the other symptoms, for pulmonary TB. So now let's go to the, I, I'm making this as short as possible. I don't want it to be too voluminous. And these are yes. the bullet points. These are actually what you need for exam. These are not extra, extra things. It's straight to the point. Once you are able to clack this thing like this, trust me, nobody that you clack this that won't say, oh, well done. Do you understand? Okay. So after yes. you finish analyzing your, doctor and you finish analyzing the presenting complaint the cough and the fever now the next thing you need to do is to do the history of causes if you watch the first video i did there are five c's you should do the presenting com the chief complaint the present the presenting complaint the chief complaints the uh history of course and uh you do the causes and complication and caregiving there are five major c's okay five c's do you remember the five c's complications I'm writing, uh, can you see what I'm writing? Five, yes. five C's. Okay. The chief, the um, presenting complaint, the PC, the chief complaint, okay. the chief complaint, 
the co causes, the complication, and the what? Caregiving. If you notice, I always follow that that's a pattern. Yeah. It's a pattern thing. Once you know the pattern, once you know the blueprint, everything is very easy for you. Just follow it. Do you understand, doctor? Yes. So you know the five C's. The presenting complaint is this. Then I'm clacking the presenting complaint. You analyze the presenting complaint. It's still a presenting complaint and the chief complaint. You are done with that one. Then the next thing is the uh, causes. What are the causes of these things? This thing, you know, what am I thinking? This is two symptoms. I'm thinking of TB. What can cause TB? So now let's do about the causes of TB. Major causes of TB in an environment. There are a lot of causes. But major causes, I want you to say it. So history of course. History of course. So what are the major causes of TB? Doctor, let's do this together. There are a lot of causes of TB, but the major one. Um, and it's in... <laughs> Is it not um what's it called um tuberculosis? And it's tuberculosis. It's, 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 it's caused by, by parasite. Parasite. I know. Not parasite too, doctor. It is bacteria. There's different between parasite. Bacteria. Yeah, there's different between bacteria and parasite. You understand? So yes. it's caused by bacteria. And it's my uh, what's the name of the bacteria, doctor? Do you remember the name? No. Uh it's tuberculosis and uh, mycobacterium. And tuberculosis. Do you understand? Do you understand? So, but that is not what I need here. Yeah, that is not what I need. That is not what I need. What I need is how do people get it? What are the causes in this our environment, Nigeria, where there is a lot of people? Uh, people, get people? Through, through um, respiratory, respiratory droplets. Uh -huh. it, it's through respiratory droplets. So, one of the major causes is overcrowding. Overcrowding. Okay. So what? How do you ask the patient? You have to ask this patient. You know that people get it through droplet, but you can't say, sir, you get it through droplet. No, you can't ask the patient. So you want to make it in I the way that post contact. Yeah, you can ask that that one. But you want to ask also about overcrowding. It's one of the major causes. Overcrowding. You understand? So how do people get it through overcrowding? How do you ask even even the patient overcrowding? How do you want to ask? Hmm? Like have you, have you been in a place where there's no not enough ventilation? Okay, good. You might not go to a place where there's no enough ventilation. Even your house might be start from the house. The people the place where people are living. You know, in, in Nigeria, some people live in in a room where there is only even one window. Yeah. You understand? People live like you can see five, six people living in the same room. Do you understand? So you want to yeah. make the question as simple as that. So you want to ask, how many people live in the same room with you? Do you understand? You want to ask it, how many people live in the same room with you? Do you understand? That is, yeah. even by asking that the examiner know, oh, this person is, because you have to make your question in a way that the examiner will understand that this is what this person is trying to insinuate. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So yeah. apart from that, that is not enough. You can ask for that. You can ask, how many windows are there? How is the room ventilated? You even want to ask, that one is very good. You said, like, how is the room ventilated? How is the room, or oh, no, don't let, don't let us ask that. You can say, how many, Windows. That's what they ask in Lutz very well. In Lutz, they ask how I many. They use the word how many windows. How many windows are in the room? You want to know? Yeah. Are they are they opposite? If they are two, are the windows are the windows opposite? Oppo, opposite each other. Okay. You want to know, are they opposite, are they adjacent each other? You know, for cross ventilation now, you understand? You want to be sure. You want to ask, how is the room ventilated? Apart from the window, how is the room ventilated? That's enough, that's enough. You're okay with overcrowding, you are done with overcrowding as a major cause of TB in Nigeria. Is the number one leading cause. 
if you go outside, you pass through Ikeja, what's it called, along there, see a lot of people walking together. Even people are even, people that you don't even want them to touch you, they are touching you. Please come out for road. You understand? People are pulling you. You don't even know if this person is TB patient. A lot of them like that. So we live in an environment where everywhere is just, is crowded. People are too much. You get so you want to ask one leading cause in this environment is overcrowding. You understand, doctor? So, doctor, apart from overcrowding, you also want to know hmm, one major problem in this environment is poverty. Yeah. So you want to know about the occupation of the person. What do you do for a living? What is your work, your income? Do you understand? Yeah. What is your work? And apart from occupation, even. If the person has a low socioeconomic status, somebody who is getting, let's say, people are paid 15,000 Naira monthly. Some job, that is nothing. That is, that is like about, let's say, it's, it's not up to, it's not up to, how many dollars is that? 15,000. 50. 50, 15,000 is up to 50 dollars. Are you sure? Wow. Is that 15, one five yeah. or five? Yeah, yeah, 15, 15, 15. It's 50, 50 dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's around, it's around 50 dollars, close to 50 dollars. Yeah. Cool. So that is not enough, joke apart. It's not enough. Mm -hmm. Even I know people that, even that is not enough money for them to take to maybe McDonald's or one of these places to go and eat. So, of people course, are, so people are living on that here in this country, monthly. I know people, I know like people I know like this is a month. So how do you expect them to live? I'm thinking that's not possible though, but that's fine. <laughs> hey, it's possible, it's possible. I know people, I actually know people. I know so that's like 500, 500 naira a day. Ah, they won't buy food that's of 500 naira a day. It's possible. Yeah, right. People, you know, in Nigeria, things are very cheap. You go to the market, you buy one or two things. It will survive you for a week or two weeks. You make yeah. soup. Ah, of course. You make soup and you keep the soup. That one is enough for you. What are you eating? So is, is Nigeria. Do you understand what I mean? Ah, people are people are actually living on that. I'm being serious. Hoppers, hoppers, and their parents are supporting them. Maybe NYC people. Ah, NYC, how much are they getting safe? They get 19. Now they've increased it to 33. Yesterday yeah. they increased it to 33. Yes. So yeah. they're the ones I know get minimum wage. Yeah. No, they actually doctors now they are adding to doctors. Because doctors in Bidana are taking uh they are taking around uh 183,000 era now. Doctors in mm. the house officer, medical house officer. I'm talking about medical house officers. Oh, okay, that's and are, in some hospital, they have been adding it to, for the medical house officer. I just pray the hospital will work. They should add it also, so at least they get more money. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the major causes of TB is poverty. poverty. Is occupation. Apart from poverty also, when I mean occupation, also people that are long distance drivers. Okay. You know, you know what I mean by long distance drivers? Yeah. Long drivers. And people that travel long time and you know they, they maybe you are traveling from from uh, Lagos, you are going to mm -hmm. Borono State, my Meduguri or to Sokoto, and you are driving. And maybe you go to Ilorin or Niger State, you decide to take a break. And when you take a break, you saw this prostitute along the road. You decide to have unprotected sexual contact with them. Yeah. And before you know it, you get HIV. After getting yeah. HIV, TB is also prone to you. You understand? Yeah. So that is why that is how most of them get it. You have to ask, what is your sexual orientation? Do you have multiple sexual partner? Do you practice protected sex or unprotected sex? Do you understand? These are the reasons, these are the way where people can even get TB. And they don't know. So you want to ask, are you a long distance driver? You want to ask. So you want to ask about occupation. Occupation. Do you understand? Doctor, do you understand everything I'm saying, please? Of course, of course I understand. So, Let's say low socioeconomic status. Yeah, that's true. So, socioeconomic status is very important. Okay. Yeah. So you um you want to ask like what do you like? What is your work income monthly? Sometimes it can be very weird, but don't forget this is medical. Like you want to ask like what is your work income? It's very important. What Let's say what is your work income monthly in Nigeria here they get and uh, they get paid monthly. Okay. Yeah. You want to ask what is your work income monthly? Doctor, I can 
can can I remove some? Okay, let's see, continue. There should still be space. Okay. Let me take a snapshot. Okay. By the way, I'm making, I'm making a recording of it. Yeah. Okay. Just in case. Just in case. I'm, I'm, I'm actually sending you stuff on, on Telegram. I don't think you're even opening it. I'm opening it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've opened it. I've downloaded everything. It's just to open it. Okay. Uh, but I'll open them and see which one is it. Oh, all right. So I think I should be naming them safe. It will be better. Yeah, that's so it's confusing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I will start naming them from today. I'll just name them. Oh, this is Pomari TV clicking and this. This is this. It will be better that way. So it won't even confuse me sending it. Because sometimes I want to send it. If somebody is asking me for video, I will have to start opening and listening like, okay, which one is this? Which one is this? You understand? Yeah. So let's, let's continue, doctor. So you want to ask about how much is the person getting monthly? You understand? And apart yeah. from that also, you want to know a the kind of occupation. Are you a long distance driver? Like long distance lorry. Lorry is double hour or be one hour? Double hour. Uh -huh. Russia can spoil someone's English, man. <laughs> My, like even sometimes I'm also always scared like, ah, what I'm writing, I hope it's correct too. Because before they know that, ah, what is this doctor typing? And Nigeria, they expect you as a doctor, you should know everything. You, everything must not make, yeah. you must not make mistake, even with spellings. Yeah. No, I'm good with spellings, I think. Yeah, that's that why I always call you anytime I'm making a mistake and I, and I, I <laughs> expected you to come to my rescue. <laughs> I'm good with spellings. All right. So, no, me, I'm not so good with spellings. My English is just, but it's there, it's all right. So, I, I don't know how you normally pass English exams, though. And I always pass <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, there's, different, there's a different fluency and writing English. It's different. Uh, so, so after the occupation, once you ask that one, you also want to ask other questions. There are a lot of questions you need to ask. Uh, causes of TB. Even you want to ask if the person is alcoholic. If okay, the person alcoholic. takes alcohol. If the person drinks alcohol. You understand alcoholism. Uh -huh. So those major causes also. You want to ask, do you? drink take alcohol. Mm. okay do you take or drink alcohol mm -hmm. alcohol alcohol a lot mm -hmm. you ask, you take alcohol a lot so apart from alcohol drinking what other causes of tb again and doctor hmm? mm -hmm. what other what other causes of tb pulmonary tb hmm? uh, doctor. hiv can cause it of course, in, in, HIV. I said it the other time. HIV, mm -hmm. you're right. So how do you want to ask the patient for HIV? Hmm? Have you ever been diagnosed of HIV? Okay, have you ever been diagnosed of HIV? You're right. But why don't you make it more, a bit more? You know, I told you this thing, you have to impress your examiner. And even apart from in, in, in impressing your examiner, you have to ask a question in a way that... It's, these people you are asking questions, some of them are not well-educated people. So you have yeah. to die the question in a way that you, you know what you are looking for. So why can't you ask, do you have more than one sexual partner? Any okay. history of chronic fever or diarrhea? Those symptoms of HIV. You understand? Okay. Do you practice yeah. unprotected sexual in contact with your okay. sexual partner? You understand? Okay, okay. Yes. you want to ask, do you have Multiple sexual person. Have more, okay, more. Just write MSP. Multiple okay. sexual partner. 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 Nurse. Okay. Yeah. And also, you want to know any history of chronic fever? Do you understand? Or maybe diarrhea? Yeah. But this one, if this one could be enough. Mm -hmm. Or if you have multiple sexual partner, do you practice? Uh, unprotected sex. Unprotected sex yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. You want to ask those things also. It's very important. So apart from that also, what other question do you want to ask? Apart from HIV. Hey, doctor. Um, <laughs> uh, can cause, that can cause TB. That can predispose to TB. So you can ask about all these, um, what is it called? Um, immunosuppressive drugs. Okay. You understand? 
Yeah. Because like I, are you on any medications? Yeah, any drug like steroids, cytostatics, mm -hmm. immunosuppressive drugs. Okay. Don't ask. They are actually very important. Even DM. Not to ask about DM, diabetes okay. mellitus. You understand? You have DM yeah. or any other body in the family have DM. Do you have diabetes mellitus DM? Yeah. Or anybody in the family have DM? Any of the family member? Mm -hmm. Or so don't you might not repeat. They didn't need to ask because you see ask family history. You understand? So apart yeah. from that, also you want to ask about are you on any drug? Any drug like steroids? Uh, you on any drugs? Sorry, drugs like steroids. You want to ask? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So what are that things? You also want to rule out things like teratosicosis. It's very important for you to rule out teratosicosis. So how do you rule out teratosicosis? Yeah, doctor. By asking, by asking if the patient, um, teratosicosis, we give the we, uh, we make the patient have weight loss. There'll be, um, they'll have, they'll be sweating and hypertension and other stuff, right? Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. You're correct, you're correct. Teratosicosis. You have it in sweaty palm and all the rest. But how do you ask? Generally, they normally ask, there are way, a lot of ways, there are a lot of symptoms. But mostly they always ask the patient, uh, do, do you prefer cold weather to hot weather? You understand? Okay. Like, do you prefer cold weather to hot weather? Like, do you get hot when other people are feeling cold? Or do you get cold when other people are feeling hot? Okay. Yeah, it's very, that is the, very common with the acts in this environment. So you need to know the way to ask so that you can direct your question. So do you feel hot? Or let's say, do you prefer, do you prefer cold weather? Oh, no, let's let just, let just ask it the normal way. Do you, do you feel hot when others are cold or feel cold when others are, others are hot. Right? Yeah. I hope I'm correct. When others are hot. All right. So this is how you ask for oh so there's something I need to remove some of these things. Do you understand? So that's that's actually it. There's still other causes. What other causes, doctor? I can cause it. But this is this, this is enough now. The questions are too much. All right, all right, doctors. I know. I'm just saying so you can remember. You know, the more it yeah, is, I remember the, like five. Yeah, the more it is. Yeah. Okay. The more it is, the more you will be able to like remember. Like, okay, this, this. Okay, this is enough. Apparently, this is actually okay. And five is enough. And yeah. this one is not even too much. This is just seven or so. So this is like, you can say, you can definitely remember five, six here, okay? Yeah. So yeah. let's go after the causes. The next thing you want to talk about is what? The complication. The complication. History of complication. Doctor, are you tired? No, I'm not tired. No, it's, no I'm not tired. But what's mm. the time though? It is you be six forty five there now? Okay. What's the time? Six forty five. Yeah. Um. Actually, on my I don't know who, why is like that on my laptop. My laptop is American time. Yeah. Six forty. Yeah, it's six forty five on my laptop. So your your laptop is California time, not even American time, because it's oh, nine forty five in Florida. It's nine forty five in New York. It's eight forty five in Texas. Yeah. Ah, uh, so this will be better for me then. So I could yes. at least see. When is no convenient for you? Uh -huh. uh, because I was uh, looking at my phone. How come you have California time? I don't know how. Before, no, initially, it was Russian time I was using. They, it automatically changed itself. You understand? So right now, it's 1546 oh. here, okay. Nigerian time. Yeah. So it's 1546 here, Nigerian time. So let's continue, yeah. doctor. So let's talk about the complications okay. of TB. I think I need to even I probably finish like around seven. Uh, of course, you should finish by around seven or before seven. 
We're almost done. Okay. We're okay. done. So what are the history of complication? Complication for TB. So what can TB cause? What are the complication? Doctor, tell me. TB complication. TB meningitis. You remember, doctor? Yes, it can cause meningitis. It can cause TB meningitis. So how do you ask patient about TB meningitis, doctor? How do you ask the patient? Do you have, have neck rigidity? Neck rigidity, um, okay. So mm -hmm. you want to ask if the patient is having severe headache and seizure. Do you remember yeah, in febrile convulsion? It's one of the differential. Yes. It's one of those things we have to rule yes. out. So you want to ask about if there's any foci deficits. Any foci, foci deficit, deficit. Okay. yeah. You want to ask about maybe any headache. Do you understand? You want to ask, do yes. you have any headache? You want to know? You want to know about any, any sorry, any severe headache or any history of seizure? Let's say severe headache. Severe okay. headache. Okay. Any history of seizure, or uh, maybe severe the comma seizure, seizure, okay, or any focal deficit. Do you understand? Or any focal? Yeah. Well, just just leave, you can leave focal deficit out of it though. But that one is enough once you add uh, seizures. Do you understand? So yes. after that, apart from TB meningitis, doctor, where are you, are you with me? Yeah, I'm, here. I'm just trying to stop my, my alarm. So uh, the person can have maybe hemop hemoptysis. Okay, they can be hemoptysis. Okay, that is rena, these things. But do you think that is a complication? Oh, sorry, vomiting, yeah. Do you think that is a complication? Yes, if they have a tuberculoma and there's blood. Uh -huh. You can mention all those things like TB tuberculoma. But TB tuberculoma won't really even be one major thing, okay, like complication that can affect other organs, that can relate to other organs. You understand, yeah. that can relate to other things. You understand, you know TB can spread to a lot of places. It can affect your bone. Uh -huh. So TB of That's, the bone, that yeah. is one complication. Thank you, doctor. TB of the bone, it can spread to the bone. So how do you ask about the TB of the bone? Do you have, do you have Joint pain, bone yeah. pain. Yeah, any limb pain. Do you limb understand? Pain. Any joint pain. Any joint pain. Or maybe, uh, let's say, limb, limb weakness. Limb weakness. Or maybe paralysis. Or inability to move the limbs. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Paralysis. That's enough. So apart from bone, where can the TB go again? And yeah, doctor, um, it can go to the together to the kidney. kidney. Yeah, TB, TB of the kidney or TB of the renal system. Let's say TB of the renal system of the renals. You understand? So yeah. when it goes to, how do you ask the patient? Hmm? How do you ask the patient? You want to ask about maybe disturbance in the urination? Do you understand? Yeah. You want to know? Do you urinate a lot? At night, or do you is there any change in the pattern of urine? Any changes in urine pattern? Do you understand? You want to ask about that also. So, apart from that, where can TB go again? Skin. Oh, the skin, yeah. It can actually cause uh, all this leprosy. Le leprosy. No, no, leprosy is caused totally by another and uh, microorganism. It's just the oh. same, this thing. It's the same tuberculosis, leprosy, but oh. it's different. It's not, um, yeah, it's not really leprosy. It's not, it's what different. Does it, what does it do to the skin? It can, I think, in severe cases, but it's still really not, I won't, I won't actually say TB of the skin. Okay. I won't actually say TB of the skin. I would probably okay. rather go for other things. There can be TB adenitis, TB pericarditis. It can go to the heart. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, it can go to the heart. So you can have TB, uh, let's say TB um, adenitis or pericarditis. Pericarditis. So for TB pericarditis, how do you ask for TB pericarditis? Do you feel 
pain while leaning yeah. forward. Chest pain. Leaning forward. No, not while leaning forward. Though. If it is while leaning forward, so it might be probably you are thinking of another thing. You understand? You can just have any chest pain. Any chest pain. Chest pain is enough for TB pericarditis. Even TB adenitis. You just ask about any neck swelling and swelling of the neck. Neck. Or yeah. around the or around the armpit. Yeah, okay. But just sign any neck swelling. Do you understand? So any neck yes. swelling. So apparently that's enough. Only if you want us to add more to it. No, sir, it's enough. All right. So that is it about history of complications. Okay. So after yes. history of complication, what's the next thing, doctor? Care. Caregiving. Thank you. Caregiving. So for caregiving, what do you ask? Huh? What, have, what you have, taken? have you What have you done so far? What have you done so far? Mm -hmm. Have you taken this one is very easy now? Any other concussion? Mm -hmm. And any other medication? You know, people take a lot of agoy in this environment. If you know yes. they've gone to one woman sitting nearby on the street or something, mm -hmm. they've drank, mm -hmm. they, they don't even know what they mix together. I'm sorry, I'm also guilty of this thing. I've taken it before. Yeah, uh, yeah I've taken it before. So, you know, this country, God should just help us. I took it when I was when I was having one severe indigestion. So it was really worrying. That was when you were young, no? No, no, no. When I came, I don't know. I took. Are you uh, kidding me? No, you know what? No, you know what? Do you mind even know I'm a doctor? The he, I I went there. I was having this severe indigestion, so I took different laxative. I took uh, what's it called? This their uh, what's the name of this their uh, this their uh, uh, this whitish this thing. What's it called again? I can't remember it. Magnesium, make of magnesium. No, no, not magnesium. There's liquid paraffin. Okay. Liquid paraffin. I took liquid paraffin. It wasn't working. I took uh, this their bisacodine. You know they are all laxatives. So yeah. it wasn't working. I even went to one time, I went and used, complicate the whole issue by using this activated charcoal, thinking it would clear everything and I would just go. It wasn't working. I took a, a, this, a, a, what's the name? Yeah, I took so many medications. So I was like, ah, this one that I've treated myself and it was not working. What's going on? Then apparently, I, I, I even used suppository one time. I have to, like, yeah. ah, it was really I severe. Saw it wasn't working. Wow. So it was someone that uh, and I told him that uh, let's go to this and uh, one woman that used to say like body that she said different thing. Uh, then I told the woman, like, are you sure this thing is going to he said she promised me like before daybreak? And I'm like, ah, okay, well, let me just give it a try. I just closed my eyes. I even asked her, she don't even know those things, she doesn't know anything, she just gave it to me. I come, I came home, I took it around three o'clock in the middle of the night. That was when I woke up. Oh my wow. God. Uh, that so it worked. Uh, it worked. And after working, the stock came back again. Then I'm like, ah, I can't continue on this thing. So yeah. I later thought to myself, what might be wrong? So because I remember that time I was eating a lot of meat, so I have to use Ambendazo. So after I use Ambendazo, everything went away. Even oh, I went to the hospital, the doctor was unable to figure out what's wrong. They are, just saying, they are just saying different things. And then the woman said, I might probably have a cancer of the colon. I'm like, ah, cancer that's of the colon for what? Like, and Even if it's cancer ah, of the colon, you'll still be able to go, but the consistency will be like thin. Ah, they are just saying, they are just saying, ah, wait, 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 I just got a message. I just got a message from, a, from last week. They said, this that is what? to inform you, you have been shortlisted for house officer, house officer interview. As can do below. Oh, wait, oh, I don't know. Wait, no, this is not from last week. This is another place. I don't know who is sending this. Ah, it's at a booty meta. It's at a booty meta. I submitted my document. I think they they picked me up. They said this is last to inform week. you. No, no, in Federal Medical Center, booty meta. Oh, thank God, in Lagos. Said, booty meta in Lagos. Lagos. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. very close to the island there. They said this is to inform oh. you that you have been shortlisted for house officers interview as can do below. Date Monday tenth. February 2020, and time 10 a.m. Uh, boardroom, Federal Medical Center, Ibutemeta, Lagos. Uh, I'll kindly acknowledge the receipt of this message. 
through text only. Ah. I'll say you should go to a Butte Meta, it's better, Federal Medical Center. Ah, all right, thanks. All right, thanks. Good afternoon. I Thank will... you for your message. Acknowledge. Ah, eh, good afternoon. No, so you greet them. You can't just say all right, thanks. Like, eh. That's all. That's all informal. Ah, so. Good afternoon. Good. Is it afternoon? Is it afternoon? We are now evening. It's afternoon. It's afternoon. It's three yeah, three forty five. Uh, three fifty nine. Good afternoon. Uh huh. So it's okay. Good afternoon. I, I got uh -huh. your message. So I'm hereby writing to acknowledge. That I received the message. Okay, or you can I say, you can your, say good afternoon. No, I got that's your a message. No, good afternoon. I'm mm -hmm. here by writing to acknowledge the receipt of this message. I will be okay. there. I'll I'm be there. Here writing. by. Let me write it and forward it to you. Here by writing to acknowledge the receipt of this message. The so I can be sure of your spelling. Okay. Now this one I'm, I'm received of this message. Okay. I will be there. Yes, we will we'll be able to make it. I'm here by writing to acknowledge. Yeah. So let's go. Ah, of course I'll be there. Eh? Okay. Hey, let me show you this what I type. I'm typing to you now. I'll be there. Um, I'll be there at the I'll be there at the time given. Uh -huh. well, that's just so okay. I'm, 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 let me wait for your. Let I'm, me see yeah, if I. Will. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, this, this is impressive. Thanks. Thank I'm so you. happy. So much. Looking forward to. <laughs> just thanks so much. Just keep it short. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon. I'm here by writing to acknowledge the visit of this message. I will be there at the given time. Thank you so much. No, write it like this, Tony Bob. Uh, write okay. your name. Okay. Regards. Thank you so much. I know. Stop. My, uh, uh, I, I don't use Tony Bob. I don't use Tony Bob. Tony I Bob know. Is my, use your name. Uh, all right. I know. This is your name. I know. Yeah. Then just put regards. Okay. Uh, uh, do you think I should include my name? Regards. They know who they sent it to now, so they can be sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no need of my name. Eh? Put your name. Put your name. Why? Why? Okay. Put your name. So, right. so they know. But they say it's a mistake. That it was not supposed to be. Anthony. Wow, this is, this is, right yeah. Thank God. Yeah, I'm so happy. Mm. I'm so so happy. It's delivered. The message is delivered already. Yeah. So ah, so that you put me that you say it's okay, but I don't know if they have accommodation. I have to get accommodation myself. Last of get gets accommodation. They have, but it's very competitive also. But what I learned is. It is the federal med. Oh, I supposed to pause this recording since we yes. Soon. No, no, I will not. I will not share. It. Trust no, no, it's not I even sharing. Not. No, no, it's not. Uh, it's not even about sharing. Okay, I've resumed the. So we have sickle cell. Hypertension, yeah, so sickle cell. Asthma, diabetes, mellitus, and epilepsy. And don't forget, you also asked about the surgery. Asked about the uh, um, recent blood transfusion. Okay. Surgery. You asked about surgery. Recent surgery okay. and. Uh, blood transfusion. Blood transfusion. Yes. blood transfusion. If they've done any blood transfusion, transfusion. Yeah. you understand? So after mm -hmm. that, you also want to go to the uh, uh, the next thing after previous medical history is what, doctor? Remind me. Eh? The drug history now. The drug history, yeah. You ask about if there's any history of drug allergy, ask about any history of a uh, Chronic use of any drug, maybe steroids or anything. Chronic mm -hmm. use of any drug. Do you understand? Any yeah. like steroids, any drug allergy? Do you understand? Then after the drug allergy, you want to go to the what? To the family history. You remember? Family yeah, history. Shall we so you use the same scheme. Do okay. you understand? Then mm -hmm. also you ask about the siblings, the families in general. Yeah. Families, you ask about mm -hmm. the kids, how many sisters, how many brothers, anybody dead, anybody alive. Do you understand? Then you talk about yeah. the social history. You ask about the occupation, does he smoke, does he drink, anything he does. Do you understand? Then you go yeah. to the system review, systemic review. You understand? Then I yes. told you about the systemic review. 
Each, symptom, yes. each, each system acts two symptoms each. each symptom. Do you understand? Yeah. And yeah. again, uh -huh, there's something you need to learn, doctor. I will take my time. I will look for the scheme and send it to you. Okay. One station, there's one station. One station. Station, mm -hmm. yeah, once, you go to that sta once you get to that station, you read the questions. After mm -hmm. reading the question, you say the symptom, the, the, the um, system affected in the case. Maybe three systems mostly. Maybe it is cardiovascular system that is affected. Maybe it is GIT. Maybe it is respiratory. And you list 10 symptoms each from each system. Okay. So this, this station is a very important station. Station is in Bama, Kinefa. So yeah. And okay. it's referred to as a venture station. They don't expect you to fail it. To ba fail it, that means you want to have yeah. 10 symptoms from cardiovascular. Then how do you want to... It's, it might seem easy, doctor, but trust me, if you're under tension within three yeah. minutes, four minutes, it's difficult to type it to, to write it to. Yeah. So it's something you have to have an acronym, so you have to know it on your head already. Uh, send me the schema. We have it. Yeah, we'll look for the schema and send it to you. Please, it's very important to know it. Please take note of it. Take your time, read it over and over again, okay? So doctor, yes. in summary, this is canceling on and um, clacking on uh, pulmonary TB. You don't have to do any presentation. Okay. Does that make sense? I could go yes. over it very fast with you if you feel like I need yeah, to do it so it? you can have the scheme. So I greet the patient. You are my patient. I'm going to do it as fast okay. as I can. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I, I will address you as a sir. I'm not going to okay. address you as a man now. Good yeah. afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm by name uh, Tony Bob. And for the purpose of this exam, uh, I would like to ask you some few questions regarding your health. How are you doing today? I hope you are okay, man. Yes. Uh, yes. Please, I would like to confirm your... I would like you to. I would like to tell you that whatever I'll be discussing today is treated between me and you, so you should be as fresh as you can with me. Please, I would like to confirm your name, your age, your occupation, your address, uh, your religions, your tribe, your marital status, your educational level, and I would like to confirm how many kids you have. When was the last time you saw a menstrual cycle? All right, thank you very much, Ma. It was shown that you presented with um, cough and fever. If I'm correct, I would like to confirm which one came first. Was it the cough or the fever? Please, I would also like to start when the fever, when the cough started. How long has it been? When did it start? And how long has it been? Ever since it started, has it been getting worse or has it been getting better? Please, I would like to know this um, cough of yours. Can you characterize? Is it a wet or a dry cough? Does it contain any blood stain? Does it a tick? If it is wet, does it, this putum, does it have any blood stain in it? Does it have any particular smell or any particular color? I would also like to confirm can you quantify the volume of this putum? Can you fill a glass or a cup of ragolis within a day? I would like to know. Please, I would also like to know what time do you mostly cough? Is it at night or during the day? Do you notice like you've been having uh, things like dyspnea, difficulties in breathing or any whistle when you sleep? I would like to know. And is it associated with any other thing? Is it related to like, have you been noticing you've been vomiting, you've been having, you've been sweating a lot recently? Please also, it was shown that you also had fever. When does the fever start? Is it immediately? after the cough or does it take a while before the fever starts? Ever since you notice the fever, how long has it been getting worse? Has it been getting better? Please, I also like to know this fever, uh, does it occur mostly throughout the whole day or is it maybe uh, once maybe in the evening or it's, it varies during the day? I want to know, is it intermittent or is it continuous? I would like to also confirm. Please, I also like to confirm uh, this fever, uh, is it associated with any chest pain? Any any uh, cough or anything, I would, any other thing I would like to know. Is it related to any other things like maybe uh, nausea, maybe vomiting or any other thing I would like to confirm? Or is it related to like when, when you use uh, paracetamol, is it relief on intake of paracetamol? Or when you use uh, tapping sponging, like you try to cool yourself down by mopping yourself with water, does it relieve it? I would like to confirm. Please, I also like to confirm where do you live? How many people do you live in the same room with? And how many windows are in your room? Are the windows opposite each other? I also like to do uh, confirm what do you do for a living? How much do you earn monthly, your monthly income? I would like to also confirm that. I also like to confirm, um, uh, do you have multiple sexual partner? I would like to confirm, do you practice unprotected sexual intercourse? Do you stay with your, uh, do, do you practice unprotected sexual intercourse? I would like to confirm that also. Do you also drink or do you smoke? Do you prefer, do you notice that like you prefer, when people are feeling cold, you are feeling hot. 
or when people are feeling hot, you are feeling cold. Have you noticed that? Are you a diabetes patient? I would like to confirm. Please, I would also like to confirm, please. Have you noticed any swelling around your neck recently? Have you noticed you've been having any chest pain? Have you noticed any bone pain, any limb pain? Have you noticed it? Have you noticed you, you've been having convulsion, seizure, that you are even admitted to the hospital and you lost consciousness and you are not aware of yourself? I would like to confirm. Please, prior to this time, what have you done before coming to the clinic? Have you taken any medication, any other medication, any other concussion taking? Have you done any investigation? Have you done any TB test for you before? Any history at all done before? I would like to know. Please, I would also like to know, previously in your medical history, have you been diagnosed of sickle cell before? Are you an HIV? Are you hypertensive? Are you do you have diabetes? Have you been diagnosed of diabetes mellitus before? Have you been epilepsy? Like you've been having epilepsy before? Any history of epilepsy? Have you done any surgery before? Any blood transfusion done before? Are you allergic to any drug? Have you been taking any drug like um, chronic use of any particular drug? I would like to also know. Please, I would also like to know in your family. Uh, anybody have the same disease I listed above? Sickle cell, asthma, diabetes mellitus, epilepsy. Uh, does anybody in your family have such disease or hypertension? I would like to know. Please, how many siblings do you have in your family? How many of them are alive? How many is your father alive? Is your mother alive? How many brothers do you have? How many sisters do you have? Does any of them have similar illness or anything? All right, thank you very much. Please, I would also like to uh, confirm, please. How's your social life? Do you stay with your wife? Does your wife smoke? Does your wife drink? Does it take anything? What work does it do? All right, please uh, kindly say yes or no to the following question. Any headache, any dizziness, any vomiting, any nausea, any itching, any, and so on and so forth. Thank you so much for your time, madam. So in summary, that is the cancer and clerking for you. Just in summary, I'm very fast about it. I'm just, but you don't have to say all the whole thing. At least five, five is enough ish. Five major okay. one is enough. I'm just okay. giving you all this so you can remember everything. Okay. Thank you, you so much, Doctor. Doctor, yes. do you understand everything I've said? Yes, of course, of course. I did. I okay. Did. Hold on a second. Let me.